Hi, welcome to the lecture series of Brain Computer Interface Experimentation. Before we start the module, I want to clarify one thing that uh, whatever BCI interface or BCI experimentation we have discussed so far, that term is used for a generic a brain computer interface, which means uh, whenever the brain waves are recorded and processed in any computational unit, I referred in this uh, lecture series as BCI. This is just not to get confused with uh, BCI 2000 software suite. So BCI 2000 is another nice tool to uh, process uh, this brainwave. But here uh, in this uh, lecture series, a four part series, I am discussing uh, most of the stuff, not only processing, but how to generate stimuli, how to insert stimuli, how to acquire biopotential, what are the necessary requirements for experimental protocol and what are the signal processing. So uh, don't uh, confuse, get confused with the term. And uh, now let's begin our today's module that is on experimental setup and biopotential acquisition. So two of the very, very essential and critical uh, sub process of the neuro instrumentation. So we'll have a look at each of them one each of them one by one so let's begin uh, first with experimental setup so first question you should have before performing any EEG recording is exactly how many electrodes are used and where you are going to put that so and who will decide where to uh, put electrodes so you should be aware that targeted uh, potential is getting generated from which part of brain so there are some uh, responses or some potentials which is constant across the skull so they are known as a far field potential like if i talk about auditory brainstem response which is known as avr so that is far field response so you can put your electrode anywhere here and you will get a required you know response whereas uh, there are some tips there are some generators are known considering the area of brain now if you see that this is the top view this is the top view of your 1020 system of your head and uh, electrodes can be placed here using 1020 system fp1 f3 c3 p3 i think uh, professor hardik would have already covered about 1020 system and uh, dr mahesh has told you about various region of brain so yeah uh, there are few tips or few uh, like rules or uh, not rules but uh, like a thumb rule that if you want to record a visual of potential occipital lobe is the one of the good uh, way a good uh, landmark where you can put your electrodes whereas in case of auditory of potential you can put your electrode in temporal or even frontal side now reason behind that is visual cortex lies near to the occipital lobe so you can get a prominent response if you put your electrode at occipital lobe in case of recording BEP. Similarly, uh, sort of sensory evoke potential you can record in the area called post central gyrus. So uh, in pre central gyrus mostly motor controls and all are uh, monitored. So these are the kind of a basic uh, areas of skull where you put electrode if you want to specifically record evoke potential listed here so always a good practice that uh, before starting an experiment you should have a clear-cut idea where you are going to put the electrode and for that as i said whether the targeted response is near field or far field and are the generator nodes though there is a thing that even if i say i will get auditory of potential i will get it prominently in temporal lobe in other places in other electrode also i will get the response but near to the uh, site of generation it will be more so easy to capture easy to analyze so it's a kind of a tip so this is first thing that you must know where you are going to put your electrodes and more importantly how many number of electrodes are required 
now uh, based on your problem you can have a different number of electrodes uh, if you want to uh, check for any kind of uh, epilepsy then it is advisable that you should uh, consider all the channels whereas if you just want to see whether a person can hear it properly or whether a person can see the things properly or not in that case a uh, two to three electrodes are enough if that have been kept at a proper place so moving ahead uh, first once you know how many electrodes are uh, required and where you are going to put them next we will take care about the montages now very important term what is montage so uh, once you acquire the biopotential values montage is just a way to represent them now sometimes uh, we take a reference value now what is the point or why people take reference value the reason behind if you take a reference from nearby electrodes it will help you to nullify the common mode noise so you can see two images right now okay here if you see this is a monopolar images absolute value of fp1 fp2 and all uh, all the channels have been taken so you can map this this fp1 here fp2 i think you, all of you should know by this time what is fp1 fp2 and all this thing cool so this is a monopolar eeg waveforms which has been generated these are the different uh, types of montages which has been used in practice there are many more almost 20 to 25 kind of montages and each and every montage has its own significance why it has been used mostly you should know when you take anything as a reference from uh, area it is just to uh, mostly to nullify the common mode noise now one more interesting th uh, thing we will see here is if you see here f3 is subtracted from fp1 c3 is subtracted from f3 p3 is subtracted from c3 so i just want to uh, show you a few things one fascinating thing see fp1 minus f3 okay so i can draw it like this f3 minus c3 similar way i can draw it like this c3 minus p3 like this p3 minus o1 so it is like from frontal prefrontal to frontal to central to parietal to occipital similar way it will come in this side it's like a, a bi-directional in both the directional it, this thing is constant okay like this same way if i go here fp1 minus fp f7 then it will be like this fp1 minus f7 hang on a second yeah f7 minus t3 t3 minus t5 and t5 minus o1 similar way if you go here fp2 minus f8 f8 minus t4 t4 minus t6 t6 minus o2 and finally the midline electrode z is uh, for midline electrode you will know fz minus cz cz minus pz so now if you see this shape which has been generated here it looks like two bananas that's why this used bipolar uh, montage is known as double banana so it's just uh, fascinating to see the different kind of montages have been used and named in different manner so i just want you to people to come to know that uh, this is also one of the important parameter while acquiring or eeg uh, you should uh, you should not only know where electrodes have been placed and how many electrodes are used you should also know while analyzing or while acquiring which kind of montages you are referring so further if we move, move ahead one more very important parameter is shielding now this wires if not shielded can act as an antenna and can surely deteriorated by electromagnetic interference so very important to shield it with different layers of uh, either copper or aluminium foil and that should be finally grounded this is a very important uh, concept because mostly most prominent noise which deteriorate the signal quality 
is power line interference so please make sure whenever you are using or whenever you are uh, performing any kind of experiment make sure your device whichever is you know affected to or kept it in an open environment you can shield it properly and you use a uh, enough number of uh, layers for your wires one more thing is uh, this power adding and in addition to uh, power line interference you should also take care about the crosstalk which happens in between two nearby wires so that also should be taken care and uh, properly uh, whatever wire you select make sure it is properly uh, shielded and efficient enough to reduce or to eliminate the crosstalk between two nearby wires further if we move on let's say now we know how many electrodes are used where you are going to put the electrodes what montage is to use and your entire thing every experimental setup uh, setup is also prone to any kind of interference like yeah, sorry experimental setup is also uh, like you know uh, free from any kind of uh, noise or uh, emis electromagnetic interferences now once you start your uh, recording you should first check uh, with known artifacts so this is what we generally follow if you see here here is the uh, this is very well known eye blink artifact so if kept on a proper polarity or uh, this upswing or you know this positive cycle tells you about eye closed and this is eye open so this thing is very prominent and uh, like while you pre-process your signal EEG signal eye blink removal is the very first step which any cognitive neuroscientist will do as well as these are the clenching of jaws and eye movements so these are three of the basic checks which we perform uh, before recording any ERP or any uh, event related potential or any EEG uh, related biopotentials so you should also check and these are kind of uh, uh, all this thing eye blinks and all our artifact which does not have a significant EEG information for any particular applications but still it is good that if we can use it for uh, as a dry run proof of whatever the system on which we are working it is working perfectly fine so another very important step before performing any kind of experiment is you should check with the known artifact that if i clench the zoo it should look like a high frequency burst which you can see here if you uh, move your eyes it should look something like this but smaller than eye blinks so this most of the things holds in all the acquisition device so i would encourage you to know more artifacts and check if you can do this kind of experimentation so further if we move ahead you can check the functionality of your sound level meter of your stimuli generation generator unit and if you have put a response unit like in most of the cognitive uh, neuroscience experiment you need subject to respond you need subject to press a key you need uh, subject to uh, uh, you know move uh, his hand or something like there should be some uh, response unit based on the biopotential received so before you start the experiment you should check whether that response unit is working fine as well as in case of uh, this is written sound level meter but you can check it that is specific to auditory experiment so uh, before you start your experiment you should check uh, the intensity of your stimulus using sound level meter you should also check that whether the triggers which has been uh, generated triggers which has been generated is uh, conveyed properly or reach properly to your recording system or not this kind of uh, pre, you know, all this uh, pre-experimental uh, checks you should perform before you start any experiment it's very useful for any cognitive uh, neurophysiology study that you uh, click all these boxes before performing a successful experimentation so i hope uh, this will uh, enhance the understanding of yours and you will have a proper happy experimental 
session after following all this so now you guys have an idea about the criticality or the care you should take while performing any experiment we'll see how we are going to record a biopotential and uh, in this uh, subsection we will uh, see different circuits which has been used to uh, generate or acquire biopotential as well as uh, the modern day uh, instruments or equipments that has been used as well so this is one of the circuit that has been used now consider a is your active electrode which is placed and three nearby references have been taken this entire circuit is explained in a separate module in detail so i would uh, like uh, all of you to first understand that and then you take a look at this video still i will just uh, give some brief uh, overview of the circuit so this part is nothing but your electrodes a is the same active electrode which is used with three reference electrode and this is the head stage which is comprising of instrumentation amplifier so instrumentation amplifier one of the most important uh, equipment or one of the most important circuit that has been used for biopotential acquisition not only eeg for any kind of biopotential bio uh, potential you consider you will find instrumentation amplifier why because it magnifies even a millivolt or microvolts of signal so very important the first stage is your instrumentation amplifier once you get uh, this output of your instrumentation amplifier it has uh, been averaged out the final output is averaged out in order to get exactly the same value for instrumentation and uh, for biopotential one more thing to note here note down here is this reference are kept in such a way that distance from your active electrode remains the same so uh, there is assumption that the noise level which is there at reference one reference two and reference three should be similar so once you average it you will get the most uh, signal or most uh, you know kind of uh, fidelity in terms of biopotential one more thing here is to uh, use instrumentation amplifier the another use is it will eliminate the common mode noise between uh, references and your active electrode so once it is averaged out then it remains a uh, broadband amplifier and uh, gain controller so this uh, circuit which is already covered in one module if you change your uh, switch from uh, on to off or off to on then you will uh, you can use the same circuit to record ecg as well as eeg topology wise i will tell you that this is an active electrode which has been uh, used with three reference electrodes and three instrumentation amplifier as you can see here and response of instrumentation amplifier is averaged out using this average amplifier op amp for those who are not much familiar with op amps and instrumentation amplifier i would recommend it i would recommend to first have a look at the detail and a description of this circuit in the course and then look at the video further there is one alternative to this mostly this inas are very useful tool for biopotential acquisition at the same time it it uh, use some what uh, chip area so if you want to make your uh, uh, device tiny uh, you can reduce the number of instrumentation amplifier it would help but at the same time it might affect the fidelity so let's see that variant of biopotential acquisition so this is uh, the uh, this circuit also does the same uh, functionality which has been done by this circuit but in this case what uh, is changed is that earlier we were using head stage first and average amplifier in this case we are averaging out the reference here only and we are using only one instrumentation amplifier so in this is a kind of a classic case of electronic uh, circuit design you have to make a trade off between the chip area as well as your quality or fidelity of your signal 
so once this reference values which has been placed if you can see here all the reference are kept at the same place from your active electrode so this all three reference values have been averaged out then it will be given to your instrumentation amplifier to check with respect to your active electrode and then you can further the same story the spread band amplifier gain controller and all remains the same but uh, this is the case of uh, you know trade off between your signal fidelity and your chip area or your cost so i thought i should include this and uh, uh, this is the circuit which you have already seen and it's a very low cost eeg or ecg signal conditioning circuit and it works for both so it's a kind of a very generic bio potential acquisition circuit so i thought uh, i should give you people some idea about which kind of circuit is being used but uh, these are like very primary leveled uh, eeg and ecg acquisition device if i talk about uh, modern day uh, tools or modern day components which have been used then we can see the currently used open bci i'll just uh, show you one open bci kit here so basically it will have a uh, different electrodes along with the leads to connect that electrode now in the first image here whatever you can see is known as flat electrode so those electrode has a flat edge towards the scalp uh, 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 like this flat edge will be placed on the scalp and the small part bottom part that is used to uh, acquire the bio potential so this kind of leads are provided with flat electrode so you have to just place this electrode here and from here this bio potential can be conveyed or can be transferred to your acquisition device now this is one type of electrode there is one more type of electrode let's say this this is a comb electrode so in case of i i, I have mentioned i guess that in case of hairy person where it is difficult to get the potential with the flat snap electrode we go for spike electrode or comb electrode this is also the case of spike electrode so like i said that lead was used for flat snap electrode this kind of leads uh, this kind of leads are used for spike electrode one more type of electrodes which can be placed on your ear lobe that's called clip electrodes so these electrodes are mostly used as a reference because it's far away from your scalp so this kind of electrode can be used as a reference and uh, further if we see how we can place the electrode or you know uh, there is a headband for open bci so how open bci headband looks like so here is a good image of mannequin in which open bci headband and electrode are placed once you place this thing here if you can see the ear clip electrode is also placed you are can directly connect this thing to your open bci boards for signal acquisition now which kind of boards open bci have and uh, how does it look like how to operate in that board so these are the three uh, modern day uh, boards which have been used with uh, this uh, four 1.5 volt supply it's a very uh, affordable uh, acquisition units this first i'll talk about ganglion ganglion is a four channel board with wireless transmission this is the updated uh, higher version that is cytone which is an eight channel board with wireless transmission and finally this is cytone with a guy daisy so if you place the cytone on daisy and configure it you can use it for 16 channel as well as well as this small part here is nothing but a dongle a receiver it should be connected using usb to your laptops so once you connect this thing to usb and you have to download uh, open bci software you can get this uh, output or final your brain potential going on so once your uh, open bci site on or software is programmed and connected with uh, wireless link and you start your data stream the screen will look like this this is for site on. it has eight channel as you can see here you can select the notch filter and bed pass filter settings from here you can also see the fft which frequencies are prominent in particular channel as well as this is an accelerometer it shows the movement of your site on board so if board has moved a bit 
it will tell you that this is because of some moment your EEG is deteriorated or some artifact presence. So this is basically uh, idea an idea about how OpenBCI uh, home um, software is look like and how you can use it further for biopotential acquisition. Now, if I talk, uh, think in terms of a system, what are the kind of uh, components are included in Zyton board? So, uh, we will not go into the detail as circuit itself is very complex, but uh, I will quickly, quickly tell you about the different modules and functionality of the same. So you will get an idea that uh, previously one circuit which we have dis uh, discussed in detail has similar kind of uh, flow when I talk about biopotential acquisition. So I will show you the circuit which I have simplified in order to uh, make all of you understand. I have reduced the complexity of the circuit and I have removed some of the subunits which are not useful. Uh, in the context of uh, this course. So this is basically a customized site on board uh, for event related potential extraction. So here, if you can see at the top, there is a power supply and ADS decoupling unit. Uh, we have used a different analog and a digital ground because uh, like this is a big signal uh, electronic system design. So we have used that on the left center part you can see this all the connectors which have your channels and your reference and many things as well as here you see uh, this one two three four positive are your channels where srb1 is your reference you can go uh, to the open bci official site you will find a design files you can check out and uh, you know analyze it further this will be your protection circuit it works in both way it will save a subsequent circuits from any current surge appearing from input connector side as well as it will save a human being uh, in on which the electrodes have been placed for biopotential acquisition so this protection circuits is a resistor bank and capacitor array which has been used and uh, further it will uh, the values or potentials after this protection circuit is given to uh, INA instrumentation amplifier 1 to double line so it's a uh, ADC uh, with very high precision the uh, 24 bit ADC ADS 1 to double line is been used uh, for I have shown here for four channels so all this part is disconnected and further once this ADC convert the analog biopotential which have been obtained using electrode to a digitized form it the values will be given to rfd module now uh, this chip kit is basically a bootloader whenever you start your experiment i have shown you the home screen so home screen as well as uh, some uh, like in uh, uh, laptops in your system there is a uh, once you open it it uh, booting happens similar way chip kit serves as a bootloader and initialize all the variables and logic uh, in order to get the uh, home screen etc so this is just an idea basically they uh, this system also use instrumentation amplifier and uh, adc like this is basically ads 1299 is a multi channel uh, adc so that is what uh, it's very powerful multi channel adc is being used and further it will be transmitted like i said this is also a similar kind of uh, acquisition system uh, like earlier what we have used so this is basically uh, what biopotential uh, acquisition is all about and uh, i hope uh, uh, you guys have understood it and uh, uh, basically this experimental setup and uh, acquisition so how you strategize and how you design your board is very important and i would encourage all of you to go uh, through this official site of openbci and you can explore it more based on your requirement so i will see you in the next module till then all of you please take care stay safe bye bye